Hey guys, how's it going? This is my quick review of my Colt XSE uh, roll marked 100 years of service. It's uh, It's been a good gun. I uh, had some initial issues with it, not in terms of reliability. Um, it was actually in terms of fit and finish, which is a uh, kind of something that I'm noticing more as I get into guns further. Uh, the more I collect, the more I shoot, the more I see, the more I notice uh, small things like fit and finish. Um, the factory had a duckbill safety, not the beaver tail that you see here. And the gap was, was fairly large in between the frame and the safety. And whenever I would shoot the gun, for whatever reason, recoil, parts moving, um, just, you know, a combination of things. I'm usually shooting this way <clears throat> with a pretty high grip and it was cutting me. I uh, would get cuts every time I would shoot it. Not really like a slide bite, more like a um, <clears throat> kind of like a, a blister where you're just rubbed raw. And uh, I attribute that to the, the bad fit and finish of the gun. I thought it was a slide initially, but after working the slide numerous times at home trying to figure out how the slide could possibly bite me which it had never done before in my life on any gun um, I actually found that the, the duckbill was really getting in, uh, close to my skin and, and causing irritation I took it to a, a pretty good gunsmith um, in my area and he did some really great work on the beaver tail the, the fit and finish is just pretty amazing I think Everything is, is pretty lined up. No gaps. And it feels great. Um, even the safety is all rounded. The frame is blended into everything. It, it feels really, really good now. Uh, everybody says 1911s aren't reliable. Uh, that's, that's pretty much crap. I have yet to have a failure of any kind with this gun. I have had... Uh, Failures with another 1911, uh, my Sig Sauer, which I ended up selling because I couldn't get the gun to run and I didn't want to deal with it. Let the buyer know that it, it was uh, a problem gun. He said it wasn't an issue, he'd get it fixed, and got rid of it. Uh, yes, I could have spent time to fix it. I do not want to buy a new gun from a manufacturer that doesn't run. That is not why I'm spending money. It's like buying a car that can't drive you to work. That's that's not what I want. I don't want to have to take my car to the racetrack, you know, a few times before I can start driving it to work. Definitely not something I want to do. Um, Quality is pretty good. It's a uh, Colt. It's not super tight, but it's not super loose. It's definitely tighter than my uh, Colt that I have from World War II. Although, in all fairness, the other one has seen quite a few rounds. Um, but it's pretty tight. Everything locks up good. There's no uh, no play in the barrel. Lockup's tight. It's been a good gun. Um, grouping is is pretty good. It's really accurate. I have changed out the trigger. I went to a plastic uh, STI trigger. Um, now I wish I had gone with a flat trigger. So I'll probably end up changing this to another one. I don't I don't know which one yet. I'll have to look into it. But I'll probably go with a flat trigger. Um, I did replace the grips. It came with the nice uh, Coca Bola grips, which I had replaced with these VZ grips. Uh, the reason I did that, even though this is a uh, 100 year service model, which is considered maybe a uh, not really a collector's piece, but kind of a uh, commemorative piece, uh, I'd, I'd set it up for defensive use, combat use. I uh, changed out the sights. I couldn't get sights that matched up with the cuts in the gun, so they're actually uh, two different sights. The rear are high knee, and the front is another brand, which I can't think of off the top of my head. However, if you are uh, curious as to what they are, I can definitely pull out my paperwork and try to figure it out. Uh, as with my other guns, this is a two lamp setup on the sights. I much prefer this over three dots. All you do is put one on top of the other and press. 
it makes it much easier for site acquisition in all light conditions low light, bright light, no light it works great. Just one on top of the other press. Uh, while the new trigger was installed there was a trigger job it's a series 80 gun um, and there's always going to be a little bit of that that take up there however I really don't like the take up in the gun in any gun I don't like the take up before uh, you start engaging the sear there I don't like it I like to have a clean break which is nice and no take up there's a little bit of take up here so it's, it's pretty good uh, the break is really clean and it's set at four pounds, which is what I had requested. Um, so I had two different gunsmiths work on this. One that did the safety, who did a great job, uh, and he installed my ambidextrous uh, thumb safety. And then I had another uh, smith who wasn't quite as busy, but does equally well work, do my uh, sights and my trigger job. And he installed uh, the grips since uh, he already had the gun and I just figured why not. Um, I think the only thing missing on this for a defensive gun would be a rail. However, not a deal breaker. I have no issue carrying this. Uh, I have carried this uh, concealed. It's a little big, a little heavy, so it does not let you forget that it's there. But it's not uh, obtrusive. It's not so big, so cumbersome that it's uncomfortable or gets in the way. So definitely not an issue carrying. It does have the full length guy rod. I uh, actually prefer it after having 1911s with both the full length and the standard. I prefer the full length now. Just uh, personal preference I guess. I know it doesn't matter either way for accuracy or anything else but I prefer the full length. I prefer the ambidextrous safety for uh, a defensive or, or combat or whatever type gun. Uh, it's also useful for competition guns. Um, I've definitely had to change hands with the gun and if you're going to change hands you want the safety on in case you drop the gun or whatnot and then you can safety off when you get it back into the other hand. So it's definitely something I recommend. I think it looks cleaner too. Instead of just having flat here, it looks cleaner. Some people don't like it. Personal preference, I guess. Um, I might change out the hammer. I I'm a fan of the STI uh, hammers, just the way they look. Nothing else, just purely cosmetic. Um, I will be redoing the finish on the gun. Uh, from the factory, the gun is blued. The factory bluing is good. I've had some issues in the area that the gun was reblued when the framework was done. Not a huge deal, just a little bit of, of surface rust here and there. I've really had to stay on top of keeping the gun wiped down, making sure that it's clean, oiled after I touch it. Uh, after this session I'm going to have to wipe it down really well and then uh, I'll put it away until uh, I'm going to take it out again for whatever reason. I'm going to uh, redo the finish. I'm going to pretty much just black it out. I'm not sure which finish I'm going to go with yet. I was thinking uh, Cerakote, but I've had other people tell me to do other things. So I'm not really decided yet. I'm pretty much on the fence. I want to black out uh, the guide rod, the barrel, the hammer, just pretty much everything. I'll change out the... Uh... Actually, I might not change out the stainless because I've I've read issues where uh, the stainless screws for the grips are much stronger than uh, the black steel or anodized or whatever the other uh, type of metal encoding that you get for the other grip screws. So I might just have these blacked out as well and keep them since they already, already have them and they already work well. But uh, definitely going to go for a blacked out look on this gun. I definitely like that look for the 1911. Um, I am going to checker the front strap and if I can um, I might do a bob on it. I'm not certain yet. I'll have to see uh, what smiths can do it. I asked one already he said no. So we'll see. See how much it is. See if it's worth it. Uh, I will be doing a magwell. I'm not decided on the magwell yet. Um, but uh, if I was to buy this gun again um, 
I don't know if I would. I wanted to get it because I have a 1911 that my grandfather gave me that he carried in World War II. Um, and I thought this 100 year of service model would be a good companion for that other one. Just, uh, you know, nostalgia or whatever. When my kids get older, they can they can see the two, they can compare them, shoot them. Um, but the fit and finish has been an issue um, on this gun. And uh, the lack of features. Uh, the features that this does not have cost quite a bit of money to add. And, you know, I've taken a $1,000 gun to a $1,600 gun with parts and labor. And when I'm done, I suspect the gun will probably be about $2,000 after, you know, parts, labor, and, you know, whatnot, shipping, gas, driving, for dropping off parts or whatever. So it, it's going to be expensive. Um, but the gun has been flawless. It has run flawlessly, and that's one of the reasons why I've kept it around. Uh, comes with a Colt 8 round magazine, flush fit, which is nice. When I carry, I run the Colt mag because it's flush. It doesn't add anything. Any other time I'm running uh, CMC mags with the bumper, the base bag, which is nice because it allows you to seat the mag a little easier, even though it does stick out. Uh, for home use or anything else, I'm running 10 round mags. The 10 round mags seat, they just stick out a little further. Not quite as ugly if you're running a uh, magwell, but for home use, defensive use, or whatever, that is fairly irrelevant. Doesn't really matter what it looks like as long as.